Welcome to Fairfield Garden. This episode is the second in a series of friend, foe, or neutral of creatures in the garden. The great leaf skeletonizer, Pericina americana, is a widespread moth in the eastern half of the United States. Adult moth is black with narrow wings, usually held away from the body at rest, and has a reddish orange color. The wingspan is approximately an inch and roughly half an inch in length. In spring, the moths emerge from cocoons found under loose bark in brown litter beneath the vines. Adults are active visiting flowers during the day as well as at night through the few days they are alive. They lay eggs in clusters on the underside of the great leaf. Eggs are lemon yellow and hatching about a week. The larvae begin to feed on the leaves through the five stages of development. The fourth and fifth stages are the distinctive color most commonly noticed, with bright yellow bands alternating with black dotted bands. They have hair like sati that, if brushed against, can cause a painful rush lasting several days. The potent anti-predator toxin is hydrogen cyanide that is present throughout all stages of their life cycle. Therefore, they have few predators. They feed in groups that become progressively smaller as the larvae age. They constantly live on the underside of the leaves and frequently lined up side by side. When they're finally mature, the fifth stage larvae spins the widest cocoon in which it pupates. There are several generations per year in the south and one in the northeast range. Development from hatch to pupation takes about 40 days. This is the only moth species that feeds gregariously on grape foliage. As the season and level feeding progress, the grape leaves may become thin and brown or even nothing more than a skeleton of veins. If the larvae run out of leaves for food, they may begin feeding on the grapes. If the defoliation occurs before the grapes are harvested, the fruit may become damaged by sunburn. When defoliation occurs late in the season after harvest, the vines may become weakened due to reduced carbohydrate reserve storage. In conclusion, Great leaf skeletonizers, defoliation of great leaves, and poisonous nature outweigh the limited pollination service they provide. Therefore, I'm classifying them as foe in the garden. What's your opinion? Please leave your comment below.